Greetings YouTube, Swordsman here, uh, fresh out of the 2016 Ohio Ren Faire. Uh, got another sword review for you, finally, it's been a while, I'm sorry, I've been busy. Um, maintaining two channels and tons and tons of hobbies plus a full-time job and kids and oh, I could keep going, but I've got so much on my plate it's not even funny. But I figure I would come to you today and bring you a review on a sword I have been waiting to review for a long time. I just um, did not have an actual um, uh, product to show. Um, this, however, um, has been long overdue. <clears throat> I present to you Anduril, Flame of the West. This is from Peter Jackson's rendition of J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Um, we're going to go ahead and start by saying that the sword overall is about 50 inches long um, in the scabbard. Um, the blade itself is 35 inches long. Um, it's got a nice suede leather gripped handle. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't really find a more a better gripped sword than this, just the way it's designed. And then the suede itself is uh, just, just perfect, just non-slip. Um, <clears throat> the uh, sword is accurate to just about a T. I mean, it's like 99.9% uh, .9 accurate to Peter Jackson's rendition um, of the sword in his films. Um, of course, uh, uh, all Elvish inscriptions that are supposed to be present on this are correct. They're, they're present and correct. It's got great craftsmanship. Um, the sword itself, itself is made of uh, 440 stainless steel. Um, I believe the uh, uh, cross guard, the, the hilt, and the pommel, I do believe, are uh, also made of a very, very high quality steel. Um, very, very solid. It is full tang, and it did come sharp, which I was surprised about, considering I purchased this at the uh, 2016 Ohio Ren Fair. Usually most swords you get from there um, are either, if they are sharp, they usually run you about uh, three to four hundred dollars, uh, especially for stuff you're getting something from, say, uh, Dark Sword Armory. Um, this one, however, I got at a, an independent booth uh, vendor at the Ohio Ren Fair. Um, I paid one fifty flat for it. Um, now, uh, first off, I'll go ahead and say that uh, he claimed that this was a official licensed replica of Anduril from Lord of the Rings, um, and upon further, and I took his word for it, upon further inspection once I got it home, I quickly realized that yes, the quality is top notch, 99.9% .9 accurate to the movie, however, uh, it is not an official licensed replica, um, as he previously told me. Um, and a uh, big reason why I found I know that it's not an official license replica, many reasons. One, it did not come with a certificate of authenticity from United Cutlery or Zeta Workshops, um, and it had no stamp or seal of um, authenticity on the blade or sword itself. Uh, usually you get an official license replica and the uh, stamp from United Cutlery, Zeta Workshops, uh, then the model number or uh, if it's like a special limited edition, usually that number is located on the blade or usually on the cross guard or, uh, or pommel. <coughs> uh, however, this blade has none of that. It um, does say China on one side, very very small, so it's made in China. And it says on the other side, 440 stainless. Um, so, uh, not an official licensed replica, but still a very, very accurate and faithful replica to Anduril Flame of the West. Now, a little bit of backstory on the sword. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of fans out there of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Peter Jackson did a great job with the movies, uh, adapting the books. Yeah, he added some things that didn't, you know, that weren't present in the books, but thankfully, um, the, one of, you know, some of the most important things that were there were the swords and the lore behind these swords. This is one of the most richly lore-based swords that I could find and uh, that, I, uh, that I know of as of right now. Um, let's go ahead and tell you that uh, this iconic sword was forged from the shards of Narsil, which in the Lord of the Rings and uh, Hobbit mythology was the blade that cut the One Ring from the Dark Lord Sauron's hand. 
um, and drove him from the second age of Middle Earth um, until, of course, he returns in the third age. Um, we all know those stories. Um, uh, however, this was supposed to be a sword from that mythology's past, um, and I could not be more pleased with this. Um, when the sword was reforged, it was then given to the ranger Aragorn, also known as Strider, who was the son of Arathorn and heir of Isildur and the throne of Gondor. Um, when the when this blade cut the One Ring from the hand of Sauron, the Dark Lord, he was driven from the Second Age, and the sword was broken. The blade was completely shattered into several pieces. Um, it wasn't until the Third Age and the resurgence of the Dark Lord Sauron that the elves of Rivendell decided that the sword must be reforged and reclaimed by its king which was Aragorn. Um, so they reforged the sword, um, and they added new features to it. Now originally, Narsil uh, always had the base look of the sword, yes, um, and always had the gold accents um, at the end of each part of the crossguard and in the middle of the pommel. Um, however, originally, Narsil did not have any elvish inscriptions present anywhere on the blade or sword itself. But Anduril, Flame of the West, after the elves reforged it, they added elvish runes. Now, what these elvish runes say, I'm not quite entirely certain. I know a little bit of it. I'm not going to go into detail on that. You guys can all look it up yourselves. However, um, the elvish runes are correct, and they are present all over the sword, including the blade, which I will now show you. Again, the grip is absolutely excellent, um, one of the best grips that you can ever ask for. Um, the sword is full tang, which means that it is very well constructed and fully functional. Now, I also stated that this came uh, sharp, which usually official license replicas do not come sharp. Usually they uh, they come uh, just dull as all get out. I mean I mean you could like literally just bludgeon somebody with a with a, a United Cutlery uh, replica blade. Um, maybe say for the exception of United Cutlery's Hobbit version of Sting, which actually is pretty damn sharp. You could cut up a lot of stuff with that. Although I wouldn't recommend it just for the fact that it's an expensive replica, and uh, um, you wouldn't want to ruin it. Um, now this, however, once again uh, very sharp, full tang. Um, the blade, again, as I previously mentioned, was 440 stainless steel. And I don't know if you can see from there, but you can see the elvish runes that go all the way up the blood groove of the sword. And yes, I said blood groove, not fuller. I realize it's called a fuller, but I'm sorry, I'm old-fashioned. This is a blood groove, people. Now, I know it may sound a little, uh, a little harsh and a little barbaric, but um, that's me. Uh, very sharp, very, very durable. I would love to test this out sometimes on some uh, melons. Uh, uh, maybe possibly even uh, it's like some cardboard dummies or something. Just, just to give you a good, a good idea about how much devastation um, an awesome blade like this uh, could yield. Again, I'm going to state that I don't know exactly what the elvish runes on the blade say, but I do know that they are... Um, indignative, they, they basically tell the story of the sword itself, um, they give its name, um, and uh, uh, basically uh, it just tells you how, how and why it's so special. Um, uh, the, the, the sword overall probably, it's not too heavy, but I'd say the sword by itself probably weighs about, I'd say about five pounds. Um, and uh, in the scabbard, probably six and a half. The, the scabbard itself is made of uh, real wood and real leather um, uh, with some gold accents, uh, just like uh, how are present on the cross guard and the pommel. Um, but again, um, the sword is uh, uh, 50 inches overall and 35 inch blade. Um, again, uh, mine is sharp, but it's only sharp because I got it from an independent vendor at the Ohio uh, 2016 Renaissance Festival. Um, if you buy one of these from United Cutlery or Zeta Workshops, um, be prepared. It may or may not be sharp. Um, 
go ahead and do some searching on eBay and uh, it will let you know um, right away on eBay's listings um, of this sword whether or not you're getting the sharp or a factory dull version. Um, obviously I recommend getting a sharp one. Um, all swords should be sharp. If you buy a sword and it's not sharp, unless you can sharpen it yourself, it's just a wall hanger. Swords must be sharp. And I'll go ahead and just state right now to anyone out there listening who uh, runs a sword shop or who is a vendor who sells swords or knives or anything like that, anywhere, flea market, renaissance fairs, whatever have you, swords and knives must be sharp. If you're selling a blade that is dull, get it off your shelf. That is ridiculous. These are supposed to be sharp. They are weapons. They are for self-defense. Yes, they can be wall hangers and can be used as decoration. As you see, they're all over, they're all over my room here. But uh, um, swords, especially swords that you collect, must be sharp. Um, again, uh, purchased at the Ohio 2016 Renaissance Festival. Um, very beautiful. There are much, much, much more to come. Um, I'm just very busy uh, between two channels and, uh, you know, a full-time job. I just do not have um, basically everything. So until then, Swordsman out.